Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my video. Now this video is going to be about us stamping this concrete patio. This is part two. If you want to see part one, it's about how we got this thing poured. That'll be linked at the end of the video. Today's video was stamping this in rock texture. So we're just going to go through all the parts that it takes to get a, a nice stamp concrete finish on concrete. Now I'm checking the concrete right there and I'm just pressing down it with my fingers just to see how it feels and right now it's it's getting really close to stamping time because you know we got we got about 70 some odd lineal feet of stamping to do this part right here is 36 by 12 and then the walkway part is 43 by 4 the sun's coming up it's really hot out so we got to be able to get from one end to the other you know without the concrete setting up on us too fast now what we like to do, you know, after we get it bow floated and we give it a little bit of time to set up, we like to go over it what, with what's called the funny float right here. So basically it's just like a, basically like a mag float on a pole where we can reach out into the middle of the concrete without having to get on it with skids and get the concrete surface just smoothed out a little bit better than the bow float. And that's all we really need to do when we're stamping because, you know, we're going to put a texture in this thing anyway. So... We just basically want to get out the, the lines, the bull float leaves. If the bull float left, you know, any little rock holes or divots or imperfections, we want to be able to mag those out and get them nice and smooth. Just makes for a little bit better looking stamp. So what uh, Eric and Luke are doing is they're going around. They're just rounding the outside edge a little bit just to get that sharp edgeness off from the form. And then I'm coming in behind and I'm magging out that edge mark. You don't want to leave that edge mark in there. You want to mag that out so it looks a little bit more natural when you go to stamp. Otherwise, that'll kind of show through. Sometimes it's hard to stamp that out. If you just leave it in there, you can see it afterwards. And then Luke's just going to keep using that funny float and get as much of this floated out ahead of you know the time we have to start stamping as possible. The more we can get done before we start stamping means the more people we have to stamp and that just helps things move along a little bit quicker. Now the only tricky thing, the tough part about using those funny floats is it's hard to get any down pressure on the tip of it. So sometimes, you know, if you can't get right up against a building like this from that far away, you may have to jump onto the slab with some skids, some knee boards and just get it out by hand. You'll see me do that in a second. You know, Luke got it almost all of it pretty good, but there was just a little bit up left up against the house. We just wanted to make it look a little bit better. The key with doing stamping like this is, you know, really getting it poured in time. So you got some time to come back and work with it a little bit and get it to where you want it before you start stamping. You know, if it takes too long to get something like this poured, then you get to jump right back on it and start stamping. Then you're kind of hurrying, you're rushing, and things just don't turn out as good as you really like. Now, that's a good shot of me just mag floating out that edge mark and making the edge look like the middle. So you'll see in a minute here as we get doing some stamping why I like to do this. Now Darren's got the, we're using just a clear liquid release. We'll come back on the next day when we come back to wash this. We, we, we do what's called a, a texture enhancer on it. So we have a, almost like a colored liquid water that we spray on it. And that adds a secondary color to the concrete, an antiquing effect. And that's how we put the secondary color in it. Now the concrete has color in it already, believe it or not, it's gray. And then the secondary color, the texture enhancer color we'll use will be charcoal. So you won't see that in this video, but you'll get to see it a little bit in the next one. So make sure you like and subscribe to, subscribe to my video so you can see all parts. I think I'm having, there'll be four parts to this to see everything. Because there's another whole section going on over there to the left. We're going to stamp down that side of the house too. Now what the guys are doing now is they're just rolling in a little bit of texture. So we call this kind of pre-texture before we do the stone texture. And if you have time to do this, if you have the rollers to do this, it just makes the, 
stamping process go that much faster, that much nicer, that much easier because we've already, technically really, we've already put some stone textured look into the concrete using these rollers. And they can be kind of a slate, a slate type of roller or, you know, they do have rock texture rollers. We got both of them going on here. And then when we lay the stamping mats on, it's just like it's already going to be pre-textured. So basically all we're doing is you can see the, the texture mats that they we're putting down have like veins, almost like veins from a stone in it. And that's basically all you're adding now is just the veins in it because you've already pre-textured everything. So it makes everything go really fast. And we've got multiple different types of stone textured stamps, heavy stone textured stamps. These are actually from three different companies. So we can mix and match them all together. And that way none of the patterns look uh, like they're repeating themselves. We just lay them all on there. We'll tamp it in. And then we can just pick them up and go. And when you got, you know, when you got concrete in the sun like this, you know, we really, by the time we're starting right now, until the time we get down to the other end, we got about, really about 20 minutes. And I, I left most of this in real time, so it's, a lot of this is in real time. So you get to see just how long it takes us to get from one end to the other. Now Luke's using a tamper almost has like a shock absorber on the end of it so it makes tamping a lot easier and it's a lot easier on your arms and your shoulders I've got I'm, I'm the guy way in the back there in the yellow over by the house that's standing on the red stamp now I've got these special like stamping shoes I step into with my sneakers and they kind of they kind of spread out my weight number one but they also have a texture on the bottom of them so if I did need to step off the stamp, I can actually put some texture into the concrete with the shoe I'm wearing. Luke's just rolling up against the house for me, getting good texture right up against the very, the, the very edge of the house. You can see now I'm doing it. And that keeps us from having to roll the stamp up the edge of the house. It just makes us move along, things move along a little bit faster. Yeah, Luke just now we're peeling up the stamps and you can see you can see that really nice stone texture from not only the stamps but the rollers but now you can that really enhances the veins from the stamps right there. And we'll turn those, you know, as we might pick them up, we might turn them 90 degrees, we might turn them 270 degrees. I mean, we try not to just pick them up and lay them down the exact same way every single time. We'll flip the edges too on these stamps as we go to pick them up. We'll flip them and there, yeah, get the one down that we want. And then make sure that we're not tamping the edge in too deep so it leaves like a line from the edge of the stamp. We've got a little hand tamper there that Eric's using on the edges. That thing comes in really handy. You want to make sure you really texture good right up next to the form. That's one reason why we roll up next to the form too because the form kind of keeps the stamp from being pressed down into the concrete right up next to the edge. Now what you can't see or maybe you don't notice is Darren's way in the back up on that walkway. And he's starting to spray some release up there because that part's starting to set up too already. Now what makes using this stamp so much nicer than any of the other ones is you can use, you could start and stop just about anywhere on the concrete and your stamps are going to line up and, and mix up. So that makes using the stone textured stamp really nice. In other words, if you have a stamp with a pattern, let's say like an ashlar slate or even like a brick or something like that, it's very hard to start in two different places. And then where they meet up, it never meets up perfectly. With a stamp like this, that's just kind of random. 
it's very easy to start in multiple different places if you need to because of sun or shade or anything like that. Now we're just going to keep moving along. You know, we, it's it's nice to have a, enough guys. Like we got plenty of guys on this thing, so it makes things move along pretty fast. It's nice to have one or two guys on the outside that can, you know, pass you stuff as you need it. Make sure the edge gets done really nice. And then it's nice to have at least a couple guys on the inside, sometimes even three, depending on how wide the slab is just to make sure things keep moving so you get from one end to the other. We got both tampers going now. You can see it doesn't take long for the concrete to stack to go from, you know, hey, maybe it's just a little bit early, but we know we got to start because if we don't start right now, by the time we get down the other end, it's going to be too hard. Um, so the timing, the timing on stamping is critical. I talk a lot about timing, like like when to start, how to start, how to check to start in my, not only my concrete stamp course, which the link for that is down in the description of the video, but also in the concrete underground, you know, my my private training, which is, which you can check that out. That's down below too. In the, con uh, the concrete underground has a lot of trainings on, you know, when to learn how to, how to start stamping like this. Because if you if you start behind, man, you're you're just not going to be happy with the final result. So you got to make sure timing is critical when when finishing concrete, no matter what type of concrete you're finishing, but especially when you're stamping, because you've only got one shot to do this thing right. You're not going to come back and try to fix this if you don't do it right. Either you're putting an overlay, a three eighths inch overlay over it, and stamping that. Or you're tearing it out and redoing it again. You can see Darren kind of in the background, way down there on the on the walkway. He's got a few stamps down there, and he's just starting down there to make sure because the sun's actually that's actually like a little bit of a corner. There's a breezeway down there, and the sun's kind of beating in that corner, which is probably even warmer than where we are right now. <laughs> And where we are right now, it feels like it's in the 90s. That's how hot it is. So Darren's going to grab a few stamps and start stamping that walkway. And we're going to kind of meet up here eventually. Now Luke's got some stamping shoes on too. They're a little bit different than the type I'm wearing. His, his don't have any texture, but they're just they're just uh, smooth sold. But they... They distribute his weight a little more evenly too. So if you just kind of wear sneakers on something like this, because the stamps are so thin, it's pretty easy to put like a heel mark or an indentation down through the stamp, which kind of leaves like a little bit of a puddle. So you want to be real careful when you get on the concrete, you know, with just regular shoes that it has got to be able to support your weight too. Otherwise, you're going to leave a little indentations everywhere another thing we we you know that that clear liquid release it kind of evaporates pretty quick so you don't want to you don't want to stamp I mean you don't want to spray too much of it out in a, in advance of what you're gonna stamp otherwise it'll just evaporate before you get there and you got to just spray more so you kind of kind of be wasting it and you definitely don't want to waste that stuff none of the None of the products we use are cheap, so they're all, you know, you all you spend good money f to use it, so you don't want to waste it. I'd say, you know, we'll spray at least a stamp width out in advance, if not just a little bit more than a stamp width, depending on how fast we feel we're moving along. And you'll see as you get going, you'll see the you'll see the release just start to evaporate behind you. Not that that matters, but you'll see it evaporate behind you and dry up as you go. That's a good shot right there of just the stone texture in the surface itself. That looks really nice. Those red stamps and some of those blue ones are like four feet by four feet. So that's 16 square feet you're stamping at a time. You know, you lay, 
you lay four or five of them down and you're starting to cover some ground now you just got to make sure you get the the impression tamped in nicely if you don't if you don't get that tamped in nicely you know if you pick that stamp up and you should be observing as you're picking it up if it looks okay otherwise you got to put it right back down and stamp it a little bit harder if you don't get good stamp impressions in there when you go to seal it it really sticks out and shows you know those smooth areas and it doesn't look good at all Luke's shoulders are burning right now I can tell he's been doing a lot of tamping I'm gonna move the camera here and give you a little bit better angle kind of catch a little bit of Darren doing the walkway and then us meeting him up that's another important thing that I'm thinking about it is you know you got to have plenty of stamps if you only let's say you only have three or four stamps right now I mean and you got multiple areas that are ready then then you're you know you're down to like one or two stamps one guy is using then you start seeing your patterns repeat a little bit so it's good to have multiple stamps and being able to use them in multiple different areas now Luke and Eric they pretty much got this last section of the big part of the patio under control you know getting all the stamps laid out is is the key getting the impressions tamped in that's not too bad Now uh, we're starting up on the walkway, so we're gonna we're gonna meet up with Darren now, and we're over there just rolling in some texture, putting some put some of the match down, seeing how it looks, just trying to stay ahead of the game. It's always a good feeling when you know you're ahead of the game and not having to rush to keep up. You got to make sure too when you're doing something of this length like you just can't start at one end and then think you're gonna have enough time to get all the way down to the other end you know you got to be you got to go down and check that other end you never know depending on how the Sun is like radiating off a house or whatever you're pouring next to it could be setting up further it could be setting up faster the concrete where you ended up pouring versus where you started pouring sometimes especially if it's all the same truck and then sometimes let's say you got two trucks sometimes the second truck shows up on the job and he's hotter the concrete's a hotter mix than the first truck and sometimes that'll set up quicker than the first truck so sometimes where you plan to start stamping might not be always where you start stamping you always got to keep checking the concrete as you go and just you don't want to get caught by surprise and then you get on a spot that's really hard and that's and again that's going to show a lot too as you go to finish you know wash and teak wash it or texture enhance it and then seal it with five guys here though like we got this really is pretty easy pretty easy on all of us you know all working together on it Four of us have stamped for years and years and years. Uh, the young guy there, Luke, in the blue shirt, he's he's new. He's just graduated from high school, so he's just learning everything. But he, he learns pretty fast. He picks things up pretty quick, and he's pretty observant too. So he's kind of watching us and learning, and then we're explaining to him things as, as we go, and he's picking up on that too. You can see how Eric goes back and retextures with the roller sometimes, even after he picks the stamp up. If he thinks there's a little bit of a spot that could use a little more texture, it just might look a little bit better if it had more texture, or maybe it would look more natural if it had a little more texture. Go back and just roll over it real quick.
as you can see Luke is still tamping <laughs> I think he's tamped the whole thing by himself he's gonna get rid of that little metal one he likes the big shock absorber one and he's gonna do some of the edges with the hand tamper you can see young Luke now he's getting it he's picking up the stamps he's moving them back over to the walkway He's going to lay it right back down where it needs to go. On a four foot walkway, those big stamps, they'll cover some ground quick. You can cover 40 feet in a very short amount of time. See how Luke just lays that little yellow one down, tamps in a little bit texture on the edge where he needs it. Just being really observant about what needs to have some texture and what already has some texture or what might need some more texture than it already has. So let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think of this stone textured stamp? Do you like it? Do you like it that it's just basically a texture with no lines in it? It just leaves a, a you know, stone with a stone look with veins. Or do you like something maybe with a little bit more lines, like say, even like a random stone that looks like stones, or a slate, like Astro Slate that has straight lines but different size stones or something else? Let me know down in the comments what you guys like most. And if you were going to start stamping, like let's say you were going to stamp something for yourself, do you think you could use these stamps and do something after watching us? Or... Would you need more information? And if you need more information, like what would you need? How much more information? What type of information would you need? Let me know what those questions are down in the comments. Yeah, you can see Darren now, he grabbed the tamper. He's doing some tamping instead of Luke. when you get down towards the end like this you know as you pick the stamps up you can see there's a lot of dirt around here what we want to find is a spot we can we can rinse all the release off from the stamps before we load them back on the truck you want to keep the stamps clean we usually bring a pressure washer with us because normally we're going to pressure wash anyway the next day we're going to pressure wash the concrete, so we might as well just pressure wash and clean all the stamps up too. I'm using, you can see, I look way in the background, you see me, I'm spraying a little bit of liquid release right on the roller stamp. If you roll over the concrete and a little bit of the concrete sticks to the roller or the stamp, then you know you don't, number one, you don't have enough release on the stamp itself or on the concrete. But in order to clean that concrete off from the stamp, you can just spray a little bit of liquid release on it. And if you have, sometimes you may have to rub it a little bit with your fingers and then spray a little bit more and then that, that's, that paste from the stamp will come right off. Well, that's how we do it anyway. We don't, we don't like to rinse it with water once we start stamping. Oh, the stamp would have to really be a mess in order for us to have to go back and rinse it with water. I'm just going back and fine-tuning some stuff. I mean, this is just some detail stuff. We'll give this a few I want to go back and look, and I'm going to take you around the corner here and just show you what Darren's finishing up with. You can see how he came around the corner down to the front door, and that's what I meant by that little bit of that corner of the house when the sun beats on the house like that in a corner it, it's almost like a sauna right there that's kind of why he had to start on the walkway before we got down there from the big part of the patio yeah I bet his shoulders are burning now too now with one one stamp left last left to pick up just get that texture in there 
And that is icing on the cake right there when you know you're down to that one last stamp. It's really hot out. Everything went good. Everything looks good. And he pulls it up. Uh, we'd have got a I know. We've just been, we'd have been smoking it. Looks good. Yeah, all stone texture, heavy stone texture. So the deal is saw this afternoon. I don't know if it's gonna to rain tomorrow or not, but we would normally wash it, just scrub it, wash it, and strip the forms off tomorrow. And then come back, seal it, you know, a few days later after it dries up. And then that's done.